I'm Neil Vinnie Kirk, and we're going to have a conversation about flashes, specifically flash settings and camera settings. Yeah, now, the idea behind this tutorial or conversation came from watching a few YouTube tutorials on high speed sync, and I felt that they didn't quite explain the rationale behind the decisions for the specific settings. They just seemed to photograph Pretty Girl out somewhere, and that is a tutorial on high speed sync. And they need to be a lot more specific decision about the process, I feel. And we're going to go over the settings. So instead of us going outside in a shoot, we're going to sit here and talk about flashes. And I have a Canon here, I have a Godox here, and I have a Nikon Speedlight here. I also have a Profoto A1, but Profoto does things a little differently than the other flashes, so it's not quite applicable to this, but we're going to do different flashes, different brands, to show you that the thought process here is universal regardless of your equipment. Before we go much further, we have to go over basic settings, the essentials. Now with flash exposure, there are four factors affecting our exposure. Aperture, ISO, distance, power. Two things on the camera, aperture and ISO. Two things to do with the flash, the distance from a flash to the subject and power. That includes diffusion and whether you're bouncing your flash. We have an acronym here, PAID, PAID. Power, aperture, ISO, distance. Easy to remember. Four factors affecting flash exposure, paid. Power, aperture, ISO, distance. This becomes important. Now, if you look at what affects ambient exposure, if you photograph landscapes or anything else, it is aperture, ISO, shutter speed. Three things. Always has been, probably always will be. Now, with flash exposure, shutter speed doesn't come into play while we're in normal flashing mode. In high-speed sync, this does change, and we'll go over that. Now, with manual flash, we control those four factors, aperture, ISO, distance, power, or paid power, aperture, ISO, distance. We balance them to get to correct flash exposure. If one of these factors change, we have to change another one in turn to keep to correct flash exposure. With TTL flash, however, the camera controls the power as we control the aperture, ISO, or distance, or anything combined. Therefore, we need to use the flash exposure compensation to affect our TTL flash exposure. Now, I have a link to a few tutorials on my website if you want to read, out of, read about that. But with TTL flash, essentially, you can change your aperture and the flash exposure will follow because your flash and your camera will work together to dump more light or less light to give you, hopefully, correct, consistent flash exposure even though you're changing your aperture. With manual flash, your exposure would change big difference between TTL and manual. With flash photography, we have to keep in mind there are two exposures happening, ambient exposure and flash exposure. In the studio, ambient exposure doesn't really count because ambient light levels will be kept low at the flash dominates. But if you're out in location, the ambient light most definitely affects our decisions. So even though flash exposure is controlled by four things, PAID, power, aperture, ISO, distance, not shutter speed, while we remain in normal sync mode, not high speed sync mode, even though shutter speed is not, doesn't affect us here, it does affect your ambient exposure. So shutter speed will affect indirectly or directly your choice of aperture and ISO. So there is a knock-on effect. So we have to kind of keep shutter speed in mind in the whole setup. Now, before we go any further, we also have to look at how the shutter works on a focal plane shutter. There are two curtains. First curtain opens, second curtain closes. Since your flash is a near instantaneous burst of light, around 2,000th of a second in that order, uh, but for our purposes we can consider it as instantaneous. Because it is, is instantaneous, we have to have the entire frame open, flash pops, we have to have the entire frame open for flash exposure, for the flash to expose the entire frame of film or your sensor. So 60th of a second, curtain opens, second curtain closes, and in between, flash pops. 250th, curtain opens, curtain closes, and in between there the flash pops and your entire frame is evenly exposed. At higher shutter speeds, the first curtain is still moving when the second curtain starts closing. So if the flash pops, the curtain blocks your frame. So part of your frame will be black at higher shutter speeds with normal flashing mode, where the flash is that instantaneous burst of light, the high-powered burst of light. So there is a shutter speed at which the first frame is just cleared and the second curtain just hasn't moved, started moving yet and the flash can pop. 
That is your maximum, shutter, maximum flashing speed. That's the fastest shutter speed at which your entire frame is open. And there's magic that happens there. This is the one setting we have to be aware of with our cameras because most often that is the ideal place to work at. Instead of going to high speed sync, we might want to be at maximum sync speed for the reason that it is the most range we can get from our flash at maximum sync speed. Lower shutter speed means small aperture, small aperture means less range. Faster shutter speed, wider aperture, more range. But at some speeds, we're gonna get the curtain blocking part of our frame. But at maximum sync speed, our entire frame is open, flash pops, we get good flash exposure, second curtain closes. Maximum sync speed, we're gonna look at that closely. Now, if we look at the diagram again, you'll see that you have normal flash sync and the shows there the shutter's entirely open. Now, a couple of decades ago, the camera manufacturers came out with a stunning piece of innovation. Instead of dissipating the flash power as this high energy burst of light, it dissipates the flash as a series of rapid pulsed light. So your flash now essentially becomes continuous light for a short duration. So now at a fast shutter speed, thousands of a second, first curtain opens, and as that slit moves across your frame, across that piece of film or sensor, your flash now exposes for the entire frame correctly. But a lot of light hits the back of the curtain still. So there is loss of light, which means most juice we get from our flash will be at maximum sync speed because in high speed sync we lose some of the light. So this diagram will explain clearly how that flash is now a train of rapid pulse light, it becomes continuous light. And since the flash is now continuous light effectively, shutter speed now becomes a linear control of our flash exposure, just like aperture and ISO. If anybody ever tells you shutter speed has no control over the flash exposure, yeah, it's partially true if you work in the normal flash sync mode. It's absolutely not true if you work in high speed sync. Because in high speed sync, your shutter speed is a linear control of your flash exposure. And that will be shown for us by these speed lights. We're going to take another little bit of a detour towards the Sunny 16 rule. So the, the Sunny 16 rule might seem a little archaic. It's something written in the box of film. Sun shines over your shoulder, you're at f16, and your shutter speed is the inverse of your ISO. So if you're shooting 100 ISO film, your shutter speed will be a hundredth of a second. At f16, you'll get good exposure. And this is a very good guideline. It's usually very close to correct exposure in bright sunny conditions. Now, I use that to make some decisions about using flash in bright light, but I don't work at a hundredth of a second. A hundredth of a second is a little too slow. You get camera shake, maybe. You will very likely get subject movement. I want to be at a faster shutter speed. You want to be at maximum sync speed, 200 of a second or 250th. So instead of 100th at f16, at 100 ISO, I work at 200th f11. Same ambient exposure, but the 200th gives me a faster shutter speed, helps stop action. Also, the f11 being a wider aperture will mean that my flash has more range. And again, the f these flashes will tell us exactly that. So Sunny 6 and Rule, will, it'll come up again. Guess what? Another detour. And again, something that we think might be a little archaic. The guide number of your flash. The guide number is something that tells you how powerful your flash is. Now, the guide number of flashes like this Canon 600EX version 1 and 2, the Nikon SB5000 and 910 and 900 and 800, and the Godoxes, all these flashes at a certain level have pretty much the same power setting. They have very close to the same guide number. Now guide number is distance times the f-stop at 100 ISO. What does it mean? Let's go back to paid power aperture ISO distance. This is it. Guide number, power, distance, f-stop, ISO, P-A-I-D, paid. There it is. Your guide number tells you exactly what you need to know. Now if you go to some page in your manual of your flash which you never go to, I bet you've never looked at it. You'll get to something like this. A page with uh, lots of numbers and it'll tell you flash output at full power, half power, quarter power, at various uh, zoom settings for your flash head and it looks confusing. But let's look here at full power, one over one at 35 millimeter. 
for the Canon 600EX at 100 ISO. The guide number is 118. We can round it down to 110. Most of these flashes have a guide number of 110. Now you might think, what is this use? 110, keep that in mind. Let's go back to the guide number. Distance times f-stop at 100 ISO. So we have a guide number of 110. Oh, remember, Sunny 16, we're working 200th, f11. f11, 11 goes into 110, 10 times, 10 feet. 10 feet times f11 gives us a guide number of 110. This implies, and the diagram will show it, and the back of your flash will tell you exactly the same, that at 35 mm zoom setting, your flash will give you enough juice at full power for 10 feet at f11. And I'm going to show this to you on the range of flashes. So these things all come together, the guide number, PID, all these things merge together. Let's look at it. Now we get to the important part, the nitty gritty of it. We're going to step through camera settings, shutter speed, aperture, ISO, and see how it affects our flash. I'm going to start with the Nikon D5 and the SP5000, but please don't tune out because you don't have a Nikon, you have something else. We're going to work with a Sony and a Godox, we're going to work with a Canon 60 and a 600EX Canon flash. They all respond very much the same across the platforms, whatever flash you have, they respond the same. Now, you do have a large flash gun. If you don't, if you have a smaller flash gun that doesn't show you the settings we do, I have good news for you. You're going shopping, you're getting a proper flash gun. Now, we're going to step through the settings, but before that, I want you to have a look at this slide. Now, remember the Sunny 16 rule? We have this table here on the left-hand side. We have it for maximum sync speed of 200th on the right-hand side, 250th. It's about the same. We're going to ignore that third of a stop difference in shutter speed. We're going to step through settings. Look at the left-hand side. 50th at f22, 100th f16, 200th f11. If you look, these are all the same ambient exposures. Same for the right-hand side. We're going to step through them. Then at 200th, something's going to happen. At 250th, something's going to happen. That's our ceiling, maximum sync speed. We're going to see that. Even though shutter speed doesn't affect flash exposure in the normal sync mode, where we're working at 50th and 100th and 200th, I do want to step through the shutter speed there just to keep the continuity of the thought process. And most importantly, I want you to have your camera and a flash in hand. I want you to step through the same stuff because this stuff is repeatable. It is consistent. You will be using this thought process on all your photo sessions. This will help make things make sense. We're going to work through this table. In this case, we're going to work through the right-hand side of the table because we have the Nikon D5. Maximum sync speed is 250th. So we have the camera set to 50th, f22, and we have to be 5.1 feet at full power with a camera set to 35 millimeter, or the flash head zoomed to 35 millimeter, and f22 aperture. That is real close. If you photograph in a group, you're going to be that annoying photographer standing in front of other people. Nobody's going to like you. And you're that annoying photographer because you chose a ridiculously small aperture of f22. You need to be a little more sane in your choice of settings. A little bit better would be 125th f16. And what do we have? 7.3 feet. Much better. But still, we're not working at optimum range. Remember, maximum sync speed gives us our greatest range because it's the widest aperture while, while we are still working in normal flash sync mode. So let's go to 250th f11. What do we have? 10 feet. Of course we have 10 feet because the guide number is roughly close to 110. 10 times f11 is 110. The guide number is given for you because BAID, power, aperture, ISO, distance. Power is given to you as your guide number. And there's your aperture. There's your distance. And your ISO is 100th. It all links together. Now, the moment we go over maximum sync speed, I'm going to take it one third of a stop more. Look what happens. Your range drops down to five feet. You've lost half your distance. You've lost two stops of light simply by flipping from 250th to 320th. And 
this is consistent with pretty much every camera and flash. You're going to lose that much light going into high speed sync mode. And this is what happened. We went from normal mode, normal sync mode, to high speed sync mode. You now have to be five feet from your subject. There's a lot of implications here. When you work in high speed sync mode, you're going to work at a thousandth or two thousandth. If you work at five hundredth and you're just over maximum sync speed, you're losing a lot of light for no reason. So let's go up on the table to 500th f8. Now what happen what's happening is we're losing two stops of light, but we're gaining a stop of light in making our aperture wider. So now we're at six feet. Let's go to a thousandth, 5.6, 6.7 feet. Let's go two thousandth, f4, 7.1 feet. So it's nearly linear, it's very close. We go to 4,000th, 2.8, where are we? 7.2 feet. So our flash exposure remains fairly consistent as we change our shutter speed. Shutter speed is now roughly a linear control of our flash exposure. Let's go to the next camera. You have the Sony A9 and the Godox flash. Sony A9, the maximum sync speed is 250th. I keep the high speed sync enabled all the time so that I can easily flip between normal sync, flash sync, and high speed sync. Okay, so back to the table, we're going to look at the right hand column again, 60th f22, 125f16, we're going to work through the whole range again. So we have a camera at 60th f22, 100 ISO, f22, full power, 35mm zoom, and we have to be 5 feet from our subject, similar to the Nikon. It's going to be similar to the Canon. It's going to be similar to every other camera with the size flash gun. That's just how it works. Okay, let's go to 125 f16. We jump to 7 feet at f16. We're getting more range. Let's go to 250th f11. 10 feet at f11. What's happening? 10 times 11 is 110. This is generally the guide number of these size flash guns. They're all about the same power. Now watch this. I'm going to go shutter speed one click over. Boom! Drops to five feet. Difference between 250th maximum sync speed, where we work in the normal sync mode, to high speed sync, five feet. Boom! We lose two stops of light. Yep. Okay, so at high speed sync, that's where we are. The moment we go now up that scale to 500th, F8, we're changing to 500th F8, 5 feet. Let's go to 1000th F5.6, we stay at 5 feet. Let's go to F4, 2000th, our range, 5 feet. We lose that much light. So if you're going to work with high speed sync with this flash, you have to get real close to your subject. Your optimal range is at maximum sync speed. That's the furthest you can get from your flash, because that is where your flash has the most range. Because you're working normal flash sync mode. Okay, let's go to the next camera. Next up we have the Canon 6D and the 600EX. Canon 6D has a maximum sync speed of 180th instead of 200th. In practice, the difference is marginal. So we're going to look at the left-hand side of this column. We're going to start off 50th f22, 100th f16, 200th f11, and see how our flash responds. So starting off at 50th f22, full power flash, because we're working a bright sunlight in this scenario, 35 meter zoom just to keep everything consistent. And what do we have? f22, 5 feet. We have to be 5 feet away from a subject, annoyingly close. And again, it's a ridiculous setting to have f22. And it's ridiculous because we chose a silly shutter speed that's way slow. So let's bump it up to 100th, f16. What do we get? 7 feet at f16. Nice. Now let's go up to 180th, f11. 10 feet, f11. 10 times 11 is 110. 110 is approximately the guide number of this flash. 
Now Canon will cheat a little bit by zooming to 200 and tell you its guide number is 196 or 200 or something crazy. The guide numbers of these flashes are all approximately the same. They all have the same power. Okay, if 10 feet, f11. If we go take our shutter speed a little bit higher, we can't because it's trying to stop us from getting the shutter, speed, the shutter curtain blocking the flash. We have to go into high speed sync mode. We enable high speed sync. Okay, let's get back to 200 f11. Look, look what happens if we drop our, if we take our shutter speed up. We drop range instantly, exactly like all the other cameras. Now, if we take it up to 400 f8, seven feet. Let's take it up to 800 of a second, 5.6. 5.6, our range is 7 feet. It remains consistent. Let's go up to 16 hundredths of a second, f4. What happens to our range? 7 feet, that's our maximum distance. Let's crank it up to 3200 at f2.8. What happens to our range? f2.8, we get 7 feet. Again, consistent. Our shutter speed is now a linear control of our flash exposure in high speed sync mode. And finally, my favorite flash gun, the Profoto A1. The Profoto A1, they don't think in terms of the guide numbers, so it doesn't give you that scale of distance and apertures, all that. Profoto seem to, have, seem to be thinking more in terms of stereo lighting where there's discrete power settings, level 10, 9, 8. However, the Profoto, in my experience, is about half a stop brighter than the other speed lights, a squeak more. But the same thought process happens when you go over into high speed sync mode. With this tutorial, we illustrated that these flash guns, the top level flash guns, all behave very similarly. The menu will tell you exactly what they're going to do, how much power you have for various aperture settings, with a flash pointing forward. Because then you, the camera and the flash knows what distance you're using. That is important. If you bounce, it's a whole new game. You're probably better off shooting TTL. How, let the camera and the flash help you decide where the exposure should be. The one thing we didn't quite touch on, which I want to summarize here, is manual flash. That back of the flash will tell you the distance and the aperture, which means if you need f4 at 800 ISO or you need to reach with your flash at 60 feet, you change your aperture and your ISO until the back of your flash tells you you have 60 feet. These things are all interlocked, PAID, power, aperture, ISO, distance. It all makes sense. In the comments, please tell me what you think. If there are any questions, I'd gladly answer and help make sense of all of this for you. Oh, before I forget, you should remember a few numbers. I just remember one set of numbers. Guide number 110, F11, 10 feet. If I work in bright sunlight, that's all I remember. My flash has to be 10 feet from my subject at F11. If I have my assistant hold a bare flash gun off to the side, how far are they? 10 feet, I'm at f11. Let's say I want the background to blow out a little bit. I go to f8, one stop more. The flash will give f8, uh, sorry, the flash will give f11, which is a stop too much. From my controller, I can bring the flash down a bit, or I can tell my assistant, take a big step back. So these things all interlock, so I can now start counting my settings up and down. Full power, half power, quarter power, depending on the light. There's more cloud, I'm at 5.6. Oh, I'm going to be working at not full power, quarter power. Because it's not F11, it's not F8, it's 5.6, two stops. So I take my power down, two stops. All interconnected. The only number I remember, F11, 10 feet. From there on, I can figure out everything in sequence. Hopefully that makes sense. Again, comments. Tell us what you think. I'm going to go now. Mm -hmm.